Hello, my darlings. It's ALB in Whisperland here. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a marker drawing from beginning to end. But to start it off, I wanted to show you in my mixed media book what I have in my sketchbook so far. So, kind of a mini flip through, I guess you could say. This first page is all hands. Basically, I really want to work on my ability to draw hands because I think they can be a weak spot for a lot of artists, including myself. So, I'm really trying to work on them. These are all from photo reference. I basically find a cute photo of a hand or an interesting one, and then I just draw it. Mostly marker, but little pencil crayon too, because I just use whatever I have handy. And, um, you can kind of see the marker seeps through a bit. On this page here, I have a drawing of a girl that I saw in a Kara magazine, which is a Japanese fashion magazine. I think it may have been a different one. And these are my Michael Burnham drawings. Michael's from Star Trek Discovery, which is one of my favorite shows. These on this page, this is all marker. Lots of different markers. I use whatever I have handy. Probably mostly Copic or Prismacolor, but sometimes even just Crayola markers too. I don't really worry too much. It's really the colors seep through a lot on that one. And on this page, we have lots more Star Trek Discovery drawings. We have some Michael Burnham's at the top here. Michael and I love her with the Vulcan hair. She's so fun to draw. And um, we also have some Tilly drawings on here too. Tilly's one of my favorite characters, as well as Michael, so I had to draw her, of course. She has really fun hair, and so does Michael, actually. They're really fun hair to draw. And their faces are difficult to get likenesses of. But I am trying really hard to. Next page. Um, so on this page, we have lots more Star Trek drawings. This is Sarek at the top. This is probably one of my favorite marker drawings I've done in recent times. I'm really proud of that one. The rest of the drawings on this page, I'm kind of, I'm kind of whatever about them. They're not. I look at them, I can see a lot of flaws or things that bug me, like on that Giorgio, the ear is too high, but they're done, which is the most important part. I try to remind myself, like, finished is better than perfect because you're still drawing and I still learned something, even if I didn't. I like one of those on that page. And then on this page, I have a Captain Giorgio. And you can tell, like, there's some spots on this page from where the marker came through from the other side. And that's happened with all of them. I don't worry about it too much. I'm gonna do my drawing here on this page. that this sketchbook was going to have a lot of 
Star Trek Discovery drawings in it. But it's one of my favorite shows right now, so I can't help it. <laughs> I have the kind of personality where I never do anything by halves. If I really like something, I get really, really obsessed with it. Like, super obsessed with it. And I just will watch it over and over again. So, that's kind of how I am with this show right now. I've probably watched Season 1, which, well, that's all there is right now. They just finished Season 1, so. I've probably watched it in total, like, maybe four times. But I will say, in my own defense, at least a couple of those times were watching it with other to introduce them to it, like they wanted to watch it, and then I was like, well, I'll watch it with you. <laughs> not that I would be embarrassed for having seen it that many times, trust me, I would not. But that's just incidental. But yeah, I, when I get into something, I get really into it, and just the characters in the show are all so unique looking, like, they all are unique from each other. They all have really distinct silhouettes. They have really distinct styles and fashions and looks, even though so many of them are in uniform. It's, you know, you know who they are, and the actors are really a joy to watch, so I really like this show. From what I understand, is filmed in Toronto, which is where I live, so it's kind of neat to watch it. I don't know anybody personally who's on the show, but I kind of, there's a couple side characters who, like, they're a friend of a friend, so watching it is fun, and there's a lot of actors on it who I love. I really love Doug Jones. He plays Mr. Saru. He's really, really talented. I should draw Saru at some point. It's kind of amazing that I haven't drawn him yet, because he's one of my favorite characters, too. But yeah, today we're drawing Sarek. I should probably mention pencil that I'm using right now is a Verithin um, Prismacolor pencil in, in non-photo blue. I use this pretty much for all my sketches um, because it's, I like it better than like regular pencil lead. It just feels like lighter somehow. And like anything, once you do it enough, it just becomes kind of your preference, right? So, just getting in the eyes here, kind of trying to get them right. It's tricky, because this actor is like such a specific look, he's such a distinct won't look like him. <laughs> Although maybe I'm being too hard on myself and maybe as long as I get Sarek's eyebrows and haircut in, it'll be obvious. That's probably the case, but I'm gonna do my best. I'm trying not to press, like, too hard. I'm usually pretty light-handed when it comes to 
can be kind of heavy handed when it comes to like the actual marker part, but that's why there's marker spots on these pages. Because it, I layer so much marker that it goes through to the other side. In fairness, this paper is not like that thick. It's pretty thick. It's not exactly 200 pound watercolor paper, you know, which is sometimes what I'm used to when I do watercolor stuff. But you don't really need paper that thick when you're doing marker pieces. It's not really necessary. And I grabbed this sketchbook for like $5 a couple weeks ago. I guess more like a month. Maybe even longer than that. I don't know. Time is a construct. Anyway, um, yeah, I grabbed this sketchbook for like 50% off because Michael's was having like a little, you know, they put stuff on sale all the time. And I don't know about you, but I, I have like a really bad habit of kind of sketchbooks and notebooks when I absolutely don't need them. But there's just something so exciting about a new sketchbook or notebook. Like the paper, maybe, or I don't know. It just feels so full of opportunity. And like, there's lots of room for amazing work to be had, you know what I mean? So, I just treated myself to this new sketchbook because it was on sale. And I didn't have a sketchbook that was good for markers. So, that's what this is. And you know what? I've actually, as you saw, I've drawn quite a bit in it so far. My goal is to fill this up in 2018. I haven't filled up a sketchbook since I was a teenager. So, that's kind of a lofty goal. We'll see if I actually... Maybe you can hold me accountable. There we go. So I finish up the neck there. All right, so let's dive right in with this peach. I'm starting with the ear, not for any particular reason. In fact, a lot of the theme of what I'm doing here is that there isn't necessarily, oh, I don't want this side, I'm gonna switch. There isn't necessarily a lot of rhyme or reason um, to my methods, so it can be a little bit hard to explain them necessarily, but I'm hoping that through watching, you can kind of see the method to my marker portraits and kind of, I guess, how I see color. I guess that would be the biggest takeaway, I'm hoping. Because um, I've been posting a lot of these drawings on Instagram and all that stuff. A lot of people have said that they'd like to see a walkthrough um, or a tutorial and I guess it's easier for me to do a walkthrough kind of, you know, you can watch me do this versus a tutorial because I'm not sure that I really understand what I'm doing all the time but I think that you can watch me and see what I'm doing, you know. I know that I usually try to figure out some of the major parts of contrast and lay those in first. And I don't usually like start with the darkest colors possible. I usually kind of ease myself into it. 
lay down some mid-tones in where I think the shadows will be. Otherwise, it's almost too jarring to my brain. <laughs> so Sarek is going to have kind of like... Well, he'll be lit from both sides of his face. Like there's going to be probably multiple light sources. And I'm using this green because everyone, every person has... Even every Vulcan. We all have different, like, tones under our skin. Um, some people have more red tones. Some people have... more blue, green, yellow, pink, like... No one's skin is just peach. You know, no one's skin is just brown. We have lots of tones under the skin. And when I'm working with marker, I like to try and really map in a lot of those tones um, to really kind of help achieve skin shadows. And I think that basically the way I color with markers is exactly the way I paint with watercolors. So, I think that's why I do things the way I do. It's just everything I know how to do, I learned how to do with watercolor because that's what I'm most comfortable doing. And that's really where I learned how to, how to do a lot of things because I really have, I've done watercolor painting more than I've done any other medium. And I... I'm completely self-taught, so everything that I'm doing here, like, is exactly what I would be doing if I was holding a paintbrush instead. So I definitely approach drawings with markers almost as if I was painting. And when you're watercolor painting, you are just putting down layer after layer not trying to finish a spot of a drawing in one pass, if that makes sense. You're trying to build stuff up. And that's like kind of how I look at markers too, you know? Building up color to make it look like it's like there's something there. It's not just like skin. It's like on what's under the tones underneath the skin. I hope that kind of makes sense. So, a lot of this is just building up and trying to blend colors together. Like, I know this looks very green right now, but my goal is not to have the green look like green. I use a lot of this purple. I, I use it in pretty much every drawing. It's good for blending colors out. And I use this purple and I use my gray tones a lot too. But this purple is... I have two of this one actually. It's one of my favorites. I recently... Um, a couple, well, more than a couple, probably like 10 or maybe 15 markers from a friend of mine, a really good friend of mine, who doesn't do any marker drawings anymore. And I was so grateful and I was so excited. And a lot of my other markers, I got secondhand as well. So now I'm kind of starting have a little bit of a collection. Um, and some of them need to be refilled, but with Copics, that's a great part. You can just refill them. You can just buy the refills. It's a lot cheaper than buying a whole new marker. Because the refills give you like, I think 
think seven refills per little container. I'm trying to kind of um, add in very sparsely some spots, some line art. I don't like to really do too much at the beginning because I don't want too much line art in this. But I worry, and that's why I'm filling in the eyebrows right now, I can worry about things getting lost when you add too much color and that you can lose features underneath. So sometimes I like to add in really important spots like major shadows or like just little details like eyelids so that they don't get lost under everything because when you're layering in a lot of color you can run the risk of losing stuff losing features I've also from time to time with these marker drawings sometimes like after I finish the sketch I'll get on my phone and take a picture of just the sketch, nothing else, like just the sketch. And then I start doing my marker part, like adding in all this stuff like I'm doing now. And then I'll like refer to my picture in my phone so that I can be like, okay, that's, that's what this is supposed to look like, you know, <laughs> like that's, that's what I need this to end up looking. Sometimes features can get completely lost. I don't want to add too much black now because the annoying thing with black is that if other colors touch it, it will bleed out a lot. But I want to kind of mark in these spots. Now I'm going to add a little bit more green up here using this I almost never use this side of any of the markers, like this square part. I basically never use this part. I just usually like the square, or not the square side, the sketchy side. But ever so often I use it. There's a lot of, like, orangey tones too. I like this color because it's kind of a peachy orange. I feel like he actually has pretty red lips, but I don't know if it's going to translate well to this drawing, so I might not do them quite as red. I just want to be sure to get these eyes in right, because they're a pretty important feature, like I said. So, um, James Brain play Sarek in Star Trek Discovery. And this was my first kind of introduction to him as an actor. I think he's been in a lot of other shows. I think I remember seeing that he was on Gotham, which I have never watched, but he's been in quite a few things. And uh, to me, like, the first time I saw him, I don't know what it is, but he just reminded me so much of Hugo Weaving in Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit, I guess, too. Um, so Hugo Weaving plays Lord Elrond in Lord of the Rings, Lord of Rivendell. And I'm sure, I'm so sure that it's just because his eyebrows in Lord of the Rings are very, you know, very highly arched, which is not unlike Vulcan eyebrows, but I feel like they have similar features too, like they definitely have the exact same chin, that like little chin dimple, what do you call that? It's like the Hercules chin dimple. They, they both have that and they both have such distinct faces, but yeah, the first time I saw Sarek in Star Trek Discovery, it's not that I thought he 
was Hugo Weaving, but I was just like, gosh, he looks similar to Hugo Weaving. But, uh, I love James Vereen in this role. Like, he is so endearing. I love all the plots that include Sarek. I'm not gonna say anything spoilery. I don't really like to do that with my videos, but I'll just say all the episodes that he's in, I really love. Because I really love his relationship with Michael. I think it's really complicated. And it's really fun to watch those actors interact. And yeah, I really like him. So I'm just adding a bunch of yellow in. Um, kind of a lemony yellow. Like it kind of needs it. I'll put some blue in too. This probably is too bright of a blue, but I don't care. I'm gonna make it blue. It's not supposed to be this blue. Who cares? Let's make it blue. To quote the fairies from Sleeping Beauty. Purple in. Just kind of define certain spots. It's funny, this purple looks very red when I'm laying it down next to the other colors. Just the way that it's layering, combining with the other colors, it looks kind of reddish, but it's definitely purple, so it's helping as much as it can. So, um, I wanted to talk, too, a little bit about Star Trek, because I think I've mentioned this in other videos, but, like, I am not that big of a sci-fi person. I really didn't grow up having basically any affinity with sci-fi, because my family was always really into fantasy stuff. So growing up, I was super, super into Lord of the Rings. I loved Harry Potter. I loved so many other, like, fantasy series. And then, like, as a teenager, I got really into World of Warcraft, too. Um, which is, you know, obviously really, like, fantasy-based, so... Yeah, I really was always into that. And I never really was into sci-fi stuff. So I never watched Star Trek until I was an adult. And the only other Star Trek series I watched besides Star Trek um, Discovery is TNG. And I... I shouldn't say I haven't watched anything else. I have watched a couple episodes of the original series, and it's not my favorite. I think it's good, but it's just not the kind of thing that I'm really interested in as much, so. But I really love TNG. Like, I love TNG so much. So, I enjoy that, and I feel like a lot of Star Trek Discovery I feel like it's been influenced by all of the different Star Trek shows. But there are a lot of moments during Discovery where I'm like, this is a TNG thing. Like, this is very clearly influenced by TNG. So very obviously, just in the tone. So I think if you liked TNG... really fun. Adding in some more purple. Because it's all looking a little bit too green and yellow to me right now. Like, I need to add some more pinkish purple tones. He has 
like James Brain or Sarek, I guess in this case, like he has very, very high cheekbones, but like also kind of I don't wanna say he has bags under his eyes, but like there's kind of a dip in there. And so trying to capture that without looking like he has a black eye is going to be interesting. Or maybe maybe I'll just make him look like he has a black eye. Who knows? Who knows what I'll say I did on purpose by the end of this? <laughs> Anything could happen. I will say it was part of the plan. to hyper focus on these parts that are like shadowy to really try to get all the tones something um, for people who have um like beard stubble in photos and drawings those kinds of tones are usually pretty bluish purple undertones in the skin um, like an area that's been shaved usually tends to bluish purple undertones even if that person is blonde the undertones are usually that kind of color just because of how it looks under the skin but that's not like a rule like I'm not gonna say fast and loose that that's every time in different lighting things can always look different of course that's kind of why I've used green in here too. Things look different in different lighting. But you'll notice too, like if you look at photos of people with like really clean shaven beards, those kind of colors under the skin. And like it's really interesting when you start looking for like different kind of reds and pinks in people's cheeks and in photos in real life too. Something I look at when people are sitting next to me on the subway or anything. I notice people's features a lot. Because I've almost trained myself to look for colors and tones, and like I'm always fascinated by people with unique noses or eyebrows. I'm always like, I want to draw you <laughs> to myself privately. That's why I love so many characters from Star Trek Discovery, like, everybody just looks so different and that's what makes them all so much fun to draw, in addition to, like, me loving all these characters, like, there's so many characters that I haven't drawn yet that I really love, and I know I will draw them, it's just a matter of time, I'll get there. But in the meantime, maybe I will draw 100 more Michael Burnham's. Sonequa Martin Green plays Michael Burnham, and I follow her on Instagram. And um, I also used to watch her on Walking Dead, and she is like, I feel that this show has given her such an opportunity to really flex her chops. Like, she was good on Walking Dead, but I feel that, I mean, this is a lead role, you know what I mean? Like, she was, she was a good, important character on Walking Dead, but this is the lead role in a show. So, you can really see her acting skills in this, and she's just such a treat to watch. I really love watching her, and she has a gorgeous, gorgeous face. It's so unique and I want to practice it a lot to try and capture it because I feel like in some of my drawings I'm able to really capture it and then in some of them I kind of don't, I don't quite have it. So I need to draw a lot more of her and then I'll, I'll be good at it and I'll be able to draw her well. But it's like anything, right? Like how I had a whole page of hands in the front of my book. It's 
like the rule of, is it the rule of a thousand or something? If you spend enough hours doing something, you're eventually going to get good at it. If I draw enough Michael Burnham's, eventually I will get very good at drawing Michael Burnham. But yeah, I plan to draw a lot of the other characters too. Because they're all human characters like that I don't really necessarily like their character. I still like watching them and they're fun, like even if they're a villain. I'm just kind of filling in some of the collar here with the black. I usually leave certain parts like this to last and might not do too much of it, but it can kind of help you to figure out like the balance of things if you fill in other things. Like doing this part is going to help me see if I need to take the tones in the face to like a darker degree, if that makes sense. Because in general, you want a piece to have contrast. It would be really weird if the darkest part of the face um, is not in tone with the rest of like the hair or using a gray here on the eyebrows. If you are interested in starting to use art markers, like Copic markers or Prismacolors or anything like that, my best advice to you would be to get, before you buy any colors, buy grays. The best thing that you could do if you are starting out with markers is to get like three different gray tones, um, a medium, a lighter one, and a darker one, and then really practice with those because honestly, even though I have uh, quite a few colors now, use the grays so much. And a lot of times I'll do pieces that are just black and white, you know. I can't remember offhand if it's Copic or Prismacolor who does this, but one of those. They do like a set that's warm gray and cool gray. I mean, if you like to draw people, you might want to get the warm gray because it can also double as um, a good like skin tone shader. I think it's I think it's Copic they do that, and then I think Prismacolor does kind of the same thing, but they call it like French gray or something. I'm not sure I can't remember, but definitely that's something to look into. I wish I had gone that route, but when I first started buying markers, I just bought my favorite colors, which is like, you know, pink and mint and things like that, which are great colors, but I really didn't end up using them very much because they're just not colors that I would end up drawing with them. Yeah, if you're if you're looking to get started into drawing or coloring, I think that getting a set of gray tones is a really useful thing to do. And then you, you, know, you could start branching out with other colors too. But like I'm really not the kind of person who thinks that any brand of marker is like the way to go. I'll use art supplies from anywhere. I'll use art supplies from the dollar store or really fancy art supplies. To me, it doesn't really matter. What matters is that you're
your drawing, you know, what matters is that you keep working on your craft, you keep plugging away at it, and then that's how you're gonna get better, you know. Great tools are, it's true, very helpful, but in the hands of someone who hasn't practiced, it doesn't really matter if you're using expensive markers that are ten dollars each, or markers that came in a pack of ten for a dollar, you know. What matters is the experience you've had. So, everybody, everybody starts in the same place. And it doesn't matter what word you're using as long as you keep drawing, that's what I think. So I'm starting to kind of layer this brown in. It's kind of like an orangey brown. And when I put it on top of other skin tone, you can see it kind of has a peachish look, but on top of the green and purple and stuff, it adds a lot of depth. So that's why I like to add those colors first, to kind of block that in. If I added them last, I don't think it would look very good if I did like all the peach tones first. And now I'm just A lot more intense. <laughs> his mouth is tricky. He kind of holds his mouth a very particular way. He has kind of like a... It's not really a pout. <laughs> that classic Sarek pout. <laughs> no, but um... He holds his mouth a particular way. It's kind of hard to capture. One of the things I was really, like, smitten with in Star Trek Discovery was, like, Vulcan culture. I got really interested in it, um, in a way that I hadn't really gotten that into when I was watching Next Generation. I don't know, I can't really remember, I might be wrong, but I know there were, there were some episodes about Vulcans. In Next Generation, of course. I mean, Sarek is in Next Generation. But I don't... They didn't get as into it as they do in Discovery. And then I ended up researching Vulcan culture a lot because I was so interested in it. And they're so different from me. They value logic over any emotional display. I'm a very emotionally driven person and very empathetic, um, but I think that's why I'm so fascinated. I don't think that Vulcan culture is necessarily better, because I think that emotion should rule such a big part of our life, but it's still so fascinating to me. And there's other little stuff. didn't know just from watching the show, but when I was researching later, <laughs> you can get into such, like, you can lose so much time looking at the wiki pages for anything, but Star Trek specifically, there is just so much to learn about Star Trek. You can get into looking at Klingon stuff, Ferengi stuff, endless information to devour. I wonder if I really retain, I don't know if I really retain the information that I look at, but it's just, once I get that, like, thing in my brain where I need to know everything about something that I'm interested in, I can easily lose hours of time just very easy to do. If you're anything like me, you've probably gotten lost on there before. So, this marker seems to not have too much life left in it. 
wanted to add different tones to the hair a little bit because like I want it to even though it's dark hair like kind of black I want when it shines like Which is why I laid down that green first. Because I don't want it to look like it's green hair, but light reflects so many different colors depending on what it's bouncing back off of. So I wanted to show multi colors. usually try to leave paper spots as highlights, kind of like leaving the white paper to show through, but sometimes the marker bleeds over it, or sometimes I will freely fully admit to you, there's a lot of times, not just sometimes, where I don't always have the forethought to be like, oh, I should leave this part blank, so it looks like a shine in the hair. So I fully intend to revisit a lot of the parts of this drawing with my, um, my white gel pen to add, you know, like, little highlights and stuff, because I really just like the look of doing that. I think it adds a certain something. So now I'm going in and trying to blend up this I need his hair to be dark, but I don't want to color in the whole thing with black because I want it to look reflective and shiny. What kind of shampoo does Sarah use? Makes his hair so shiny. A very logical shampoo, I'm sure. I'm sure of it. I use like you can probably tell a mix of one's Prismacolor. There's certain colors that I only have in one brand and for example like I have a lot of skin tone colors in the Copic or Copic markers. I'll never figure out the right way to say that. Anyway, I have a lot of skin tones in that brand but I don't have as many bright colors. I have a lot of primary colors in the Prisma colors. It's really funny that I'm using this right now because <laughs> so this side of the marker, like you can see it's very fine tip, like more of a fine tip than any of the markers usually have been. And I actually normally colors have like this fine of a tip because it's kind of normally semi-useless. I mean, I'm not really proving my point very well right now because I'm actually using it, but I almost never use the tips like this side of the marker when the tips are this fine because you can't like color with it or anything. It's only really good for what I'm using it for, which is do some finer details in this like kind of reddish brown maroon color. So yeah, I'm not really proving my point well, but I really never use this side of the Prisma colors when they have this fine tip. And I'm always really annoyed because I always prefer the like still fine tip, but not as fine as this. There's like a little bit bigger The one I'm using right now on this Copic is like their kind of brush felt tip side. I think that's probably my biggest preference with any of these markers is this tip. This like kind of... I, I'm not sure if this is technically considered a brush tip, but it has a lot of nice bend, which is really useful when you're coloring and you need to kind of flick it out to create a blend or an ombre. It's 
very satisfying to color with like such a flexible felt tip. I don't know, it just has a really nice paper feel. <laughs> if that makes sense. Feels nice to color with. I'm trying to create a little dimension in here in the blue. There is actually a lot of detail in Sarek's actual like robe slash cape. I don't know what this outfit is considered because it's it's kind of more like a robe, but anyway. There's actually a lot of embroidery, but I don't I'm not gonna color in all the tiny, tiny, tiny little details. Cause this is a pretty small piece. It's just gonna look too busy. So just kind of doing the general shading and the general colors with it because I don't want this to be too detailed and take away from the point of this which is to kind of be a little portrait a little mini portrait I've used so much of this blue in all my Star Trek marker drawings because I mean all of the Discovery uniforms feature blue, so it's just, you end up using a lot of blue, which is good, because this was a marker. It's like a dark blue. I wasn't really using it that much before, but now it's getting a lot of use, so. Alright, now I'm going to use this gel. And a little more of this black before I do the highlights on the hair. I'm realizing it wasn't quite dark enough. I need to add a little bit more. And a little on the nose here. Thing we made. 